So I have these steel ball bearings laying around, which got me thinking about an old 2011 commercial, which then got me thinking about this ball balancer that I made at the beginning of the year. Looking back on this build, I see a lot of issues. I mean, it's loud, not smooth, and completely over-engineered. Not to mention the fact that it has many panic attacks. Anyways, ranting aside, I think I could do a much better job at making one of these, so it's time to try again. Let's build another ball balancing robot. Alright, so the basic idea for version 2 remains the same. We're going to need to make a robot with a rotating platform that can move a steel ball around. We'll also need a way to track the position of the ball, which will then be fed into a control algorithm that will figure out the best way to orient the platform in order to prevent the ball from falling. Should be pretty simple. Ball Balancer Uno used six servo motors with the position tracking camera mounted on a pole in the back. The servos were quite noisy, so this time I'll be using stepper motors and only three of them, since the platform actually needs a minimum of just two degrees of freedom rather than six. The stepper motors should also provide much smoother motion. I'll also be using a resistive touchpad that will service both the platform and the ball tracking sensor. Just like the ones on your phone or tablet, the touchpad can detect the location of a pressure point, and because the steel ball is heavy enough to exert a significant amount of pressure on the screen, we should be able to get reliable readings. I'm going to start off by sketching the basic idea of the ball balancer. It's going to have three legs, each having two linkages, with one of the linkages having a spherical joint and the other having a pin joint. This design configuration is called a 3RPS parallel manipulator, and you can read much more about it online. I also went ahead and worked out the inverse kinematic equations for this type of parallel manipulator, which are equations that calculate the motor positions needed to achieve a specific orientation of the platform. And while I won't bore you with the lengthy derivations, just know that the process mainly comprised of using lots of vector calculus and trigonometry, which meant tapping back into my 8th grade self to relearn things like the law of cosines. After realizing my conceptual design in CAD, I started working on the actual detailed design. My main objective was to make the balancer very low profile, which means hiding all the wires and electronics. This was probably the only thing that I did right in the first version. That is, if this is your idea of low profile. Anyways, let's get these parts printed. Starting off the assembly, I'm going to first press some threaded inserts into a couple of the prints with the hot soldering iron. I also made these little cutouts in the base because they look nice. Next, I'll put these spacers onto the stepper motors and screw each motor onto the base plate. These wires are ridiculously long, so I'm going to do a bit of wire control with some zip ties. For the electronics, I pretty much just need a circuit to control the drivers, so I took apart my Rubik's Cube solver from my last video and repurposed the boards. I'm using a Teensy 4.1 microcontroller for the brains of the project and one of these TMC2208 stepper motor drivers to drive each stepper motor. I mounted all of the electronics to the bottom of the machine and then screwed on each of the lower stage linkages onto each of the stepper motors and then did a quick test to make sure that the circuit didn't spontaneously combust. Since the second stage linkages need to have a ball joint at their ends, I'm going to be using these RC tie rods. The second stage linkages attach to the first stage linkages, which will then connect to the platform frame, which results in a platform that is omni-rotational. Nice. Now on to testing. The first thing that I did was make a library for the inverse kinematic equations. I'll be able to input an orientation for the platform to turn to and have the library spit out the motor positions. And now we'll work on the actual ball balancing code. First, we're going to need to mount the touchpad onto the platform frame. For that, I designed and printed these retainer clips. I'm going to be using a PID algorithm to balance the ball. The error in the algorithm is defined as how far away the ball is from the center of the platform, which makes the integral term the accumulation of the error over time, which makes the derivative term the instantaneous velocity of the ball. Adding these terms together, we get the output value, which is the ideal direction to get the ball off the platform in the fastest way. Flipping the sign of the output, we get the ideal direction to slow the ball down and move it to the center. And we'll do all this using not one, but two PID algorithms. One for the X direction and one for the Y direction. 
Now, this seems relatively simple, but the hard part in making a PID controller is tuning. That is, changing the value of the constants that each term is multiplied by. Make the proportional term too high, and the ball falls off. Make the integral term too high, and the ball falls off. Make the derivative term too high, and you guessed it, the ball falls off. But even in the cases when the ball doesn't fall off, you can still get a swaying motion, which means that the ball will never come to a rest. And even when you are able to get the ball to rest, it doesn't mean that it was the smoothest or most efficient way to do so. But after lots of tuning and testing, you start to hone in on the best values to use, and it actually starts to balance the ball instead of violently projectile launching it into the abyss. The next issue was getting smooth motion. For this, I turned to controlling the speed and acceleration of the stepper motors. I'm aware that this is also a good application for another PID controller, but I think that five simultaneous PID controllers would be a bit too much. Instead, I simply decided to make the speed and acceleration of each stepper motor proportional to the difference between the motor's current and target positions. In other words, when a motor is close to its target position, its speed and acceleration are low. And when it's far away from its target position, its speed and acceleration are high. In addition to this, I decided to switch the drivers to 1 16th micro stepping, which means that instead of having 200 steps per revolution, they have 3200 steps per revolution, which makes actuation much more smooth and precise. Now that ball balancing seems to work, there's one more thing I need to do. Something that I wanted to do with my previous version was to have the ball balancer move the ball around in different patterns, and I'll leave it to your imagination as to why that didn't work out. Anyway, implementing this was actually pretty simple. The ball balancing algorithm moves the ball to the center of the platform. But if we were to change what the platform thinks is the center, then we can move the ball to a different point on the platform. Constantly doing this creates motion, and doing this with equation creates shapes. And without further ado, here are the results. 